welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element 18, flood management. Outdoor courts off, I'm Mr S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Flooding can have devastating impacts on people and the economy. As a result, money and ideas have been focused towards managing rivers to prevent them from flooding altogether or reduce the impact of that flood. There are two strategies that we're gonna look at today. And the first one is hard engineering. So hard engineering is a method of flood management that involves building structures or manipulating the natural environment to prevent rivers from flooding at times of high discharge. So that means when there's lots of water in the river. Since hard engineering involves construction, it's often seen as a more expensive strategy and has negative impacts on the natural environment. However, hard engineering is often seen as being the best way or the most effective way to protect towns and cities from flooding. So the first one we're going to look at is dams, and that's on the left-hand side of our screen. And a dam is a wall built across the river valley, or the river channel. The idea being that it blocks the river floor and allowing the water to build up behind it, upstream. The advantage of this is that it's going to reduce the amount of water that can make its way downstream towards an urban area. The other advantage is that you can actually generate electricity. So by passing the water build up behind here in this uh, reservoir, the lake behind the dam, passing it through a small pipe and a turbine, you can spin that turbine very quickly or turbines in, in larger dams and produce electricity, hydroelectric power. However, dams do come with some significant disadvantages. First of all, they are a massive civil engineering project. So by that we mean it's a massive building project that requires a substantial amount of funding in order to get that project up and running. Secondly, you've got to flood an entire valley behind this dam in order to build that reservoir. So that's going to destroy the natural ecosystem of the area and there could be villages in there as well. The river course has now been disrupted which means that any fish in this area or any wildlife downstream depending on the river are going to be impacted by this as well. So dams tend to have a significant environmental and ecological impact. But they are a very effective strategy at reducing the discharge in rivers. The second one is embankments. These are flood walls or barriers along the side of the river and you're most likely to see these inside a city. So if you've got a city that's built on a river like Newcastle is and Gateshead and Durham, you're going to see some examples of this inside the city to try and reduce the impact of that flooding. The principle is this wall is going to extend the river channel, how deep that river channel is. So this river would have once stopped here, but now they've added an entire section of wall which is now going to increase the depth at which that river can get. The advantage, well, that river can now handle an increased discharge before it floods. However, again, it does come with disadvantages. One, it detracts from the aesthetics of the area, so it doesn't look very nice. Two, well, you are creating an even deeper river, which means that when it does eventually flood, that river's flooding is going to be even more significant than when that flood wall wasn't there. So it's going to take more water and it's more less likely to occur, but it doesn't say that it can't occur. There will always be one freak event, maybe it's a one in 200 year flood that puts so much water into that river that even it, this flood wall will not prevent it from flooding. Well, soft engineering is our next one. And in contrast to hard engineering, rather than trying to change the natural environment, soft engineering works with that environment. So due to the fact that we're not building any structures, it's a cheaper alternative to hard engineering, but a lot of people would argue that it has less uh, effect, it's less effective compared to hard engineering. So the first one we're gonna have a look at is floodplain zoning. So this involves highlighting areas of land on either side of the river and saying you cannot build there. So you can see on my diagram here, We've got an area that's been highlighted as very high risk of flooding. And the only things that can this land can be used for are for agriculture, so growing crops, recreation, open spaces, and parks. Things that we don't mind flooding have very little to no risk of damaging people 
their livelihoods or the economy, the crops will grow back. And it is very fertile soil. The further away that we get from the river, the less risk associated with flooding and the less restrictions put in place in terms of building. So you can see closest to the river, in this high flood, uh, flood risk area, anything that, has, that wants to be built here in planning permission has to show that they are flood resistant. So they've said that they can build two story homes, some residential flats in industry and commercial, but they have to be flood resistant. And the further away you get, the restrictions get less and less to the point where we've got no flood risk. And that's where this uh, council or the government have said, well, this is where we can build our critical infrastructure, such as the hospitals, the major route networks, evacuation centers. It's good because it's cheap. Effectively, all you're doing is putting words on a page and saying, this can only happen if this occurs. However, it does absolutely nothing for existing infrastructure. So if you've already got a housing estate built on a floodplain and you say, well, that's a floodplain zone, you can't build there, that means nothing, does it? It doesn't stop the flooding from happening. So it's only effective for new builds. And then the second one is afforestation. So this is the planting of new trees or can even be other types of vegetation like shrubs and grasses as well. So these trees are planted upstream to large urban areas, so closer to the, uh, the source of the river. And the idea is that more trees will increase the amount of interception. So that's going to slow the amount of water that makes it into the river, which then makes it down to the city. But experts believe that this is the most effective in the upper course of the river. So remember, a few lessons ago, we discussed the fact that the upper course of the river is very steep and lacks any vegetation or very little vegetation. So we know that steep land increases the amount of surface ru uh, runoff. Very little water gets uh, infiltrated or percolated right into the ground. And there's very little vegetation to intercept it. So all of that r water on the hills and the mountains in the upper course of the, of the river end up in the main river channel. So by planting more trees in the upper course of the river, we're going to increase the amount of interception and it slows the water down enough that some of it might actually be intercepted into the soil. So an advantage of this is it's really cheap to grow air to plant trees and it's an environmentally sustainable way of preventing flooding or reducing the risk of flooding. But it is not a flood prevention strategy. It doesn't stop flooding from happening. It just reduces the risk or the impact that, that flood has. Well, that brings our lesson to an end, but continue at your own pace by completing the now try test for homework, class dismissed.